Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live, everyone. As we're just about 42 minutes away from the closing bell, we're going to check in on what's been moving markets today. For that, let's bring in our guest, Sean Cruz, TD Ameritrade's Director of Derivative Strategy. So first of all, welcome to the show. And I want to talk about some of the buying and selling trends that you're seeing amongst your clients. What are they mostly rotating into and out of in this current climate? Yeah, it was interesting what we saw from our clients last month, and it's it's noteworthy that the IMX are, that measure actually ticked lower, but that really reflects that there was a little bit more of a retrenchment into some of the less volatile um, names that they could get into out there. And so what we mean by that, what we mean is if you look at what they were selling, if, if there's anything really tied to a commodity, um, be that energy companies or material companies who actually had a pretty good uh, start to the month with commodity prices rising, they actually use that as an opportunity to take some profits in those names as they were, um, in many cases, significantly outperforming the market as a whole. And so what they chose to rotate into um, was some of the, we saw it in more of the financials and the consumer uh, discretionary tied names, but also in some of those uh, blue, chip, uh, blue chip tech type names where you're looking at, say, uh, uh, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, the consumer discretionary space, Tesla as well. And, and even uh, JP Morgan, uh, to some extent, was a name that drew a lot of interest. So it looked like it was more of just finding some of those quality companies and using that pullback as an opportunity to purchase and, and get some exposure there. But the way they funded those trades or those purchases was by selling um, some of the names that had a pretty strong run. Broadly speaking, Sean, April has been the best performer for the S&P. Uh, do you expect another strong month? I'm going to be watching. Uh, so I'll look at. I'll break it up into really uh, two two week periods. So the the two weeks leading into what I consider the real kickoff to earnings season, when we hear from the big banks in, in mid month, I'm actually going to be watching what a lot of the analysts are doing, just in terms of adjustments to price targets, um, revenue, and earnings estimates, um, just to see what they do leading into that. Then we're going to take a look at what we hear from the companies, and more importantly, how they forecast. I wouldn't be too surprised to see some of these companies that have significant commodity exposure. Um, you can look at some of those staples, um, even some of those discretionary companies, um, looking at those companies and seeing what they do with their guidance. Because with the commodity marketplace right now, just so volatile, um, look at what we saw with not just crude and gold, but also a lot of the agricultural products that you should be, don't really pay much mind to. But when you see those in, in flight and in flux in the way they were, it can be a little bit difficult for companies that that is a significant expense for them to give any sort of confidence in in terms of a guidance moving forward. So I am going to be interested to see what we hear from management teams when they start reporting in the second half of the month and how that stacks up to what we see from analyst adjustments leading into that. For any investor that follows the adage of buy the rumor, sell the news, is anybody going to stick around to see what that news is on the adjustment of some of those forecasts that you were mentioning, given all of the factors that companies are wading through right now? I think what you will see is one, maybe a little bit of a lower exposure number, and that's consistent with what we're seeing um, out of the IMX. And I think if you're looking at those companies, like I just mentioned, that have a significant exposure almost directly to some of those commodities as direct inputs to their business. I think investors might take a little bit more of a wait and see approach to that. And I think that's consistent with what we, we saw over the month of March. But I, I think in many cases, those fundamentally sound companies that you're really not concerned if they're going to go anywhere. I don't think anyone's expecting Microsoft or Amazon, Google, um, any of those names to to really go go the way of the dinosaur because of these rising costs. I think those are the companies that they're going to be more comfortable holding and then take a little bit more of a wait and see approach um, from the companies where there is a lot of uncertainty in how this inflationary environment is going to impact the results. And speaking of wait and see, obviously this is happening amid, amid the backdrop of the Russia-Ukraine crisis. As you look overseas and what also what we're seeing in terms of the, the delisting now perhaps not happening as we look at what's happening with the Chinese companies, what are some of the overseas markets and some of the factors that you're watching there? 
Yeah, I think the as, as far as a lot of those Chinese companies that are, are available to investors here in the U.S. Um, as ADRs, it's been a, a priority that uh, I think the SEC has, has discussed and said there's a, a lot of things they want to do just in terms of investor protection that they need to meet or they're going to have, a, I think, a lot more of a difficult time um, here in the U.S. market. So I think that'll be interesting to see how that develops. We're already getting some headlines going into the week um, where China is maybe looking to come in and meet somewhere in the middle on that. But that's really going to be something we're just going to have to watch play out and see um, where both sides land and, and ultimately what U.S. regulators are comfortable with. Um, as far as what is going on in Europe, I think that is really going to be tied to how things escalate or, or potentially de-escalate um, between uh, the European countries and Russia. Because right now, there's a little bit um, of uncertainty over, are we going to escalate uh, some of those sanctions? Um, are they going to go into outright embargoes of of Russian energy across the board. Some German officials came out and said if that was the case, we would probably see the likelihood of those costs skyrocketing to a point where it would kick in a recession out of Europe. That's certainly not going to be good um, for a lot of those European markets or companies with exposure there. So I, I think that, that one is going to be a lot more tied to the situation with Russia, Russia. And I think it's going to be tied to how things progress in, in the next week or two um, in terms of, of where things go with sanctions. Quick question, just 20 seconds, Sean. What is Elon Musk up to with Twitter? <laughs> I think he put out a tweet a few weeks back asking everyone if they thought he should maybe get a little bit more uh, involved actively with Twitter. And I guess he took the results as saying he should, and it went out there and took a, a pretty big stake. But I don't think we've, we've seen the last headline in the story. So uh, certainly going to be something to keep an eye on.